So, Evie, what do you, what do you want to work on? Backhands and probably forehands as well. But like trap and trap and shoot. <clears throat> what what type of backhand? What type of forehand? Tomahawk backhand and forehand shooting. Yeah, in what context in the game though? Like in what sort of situation? Posting up. Static, running, whatever. Posting up, trap, turn, shoot. Posting up, trap, turn, shoot. Okay. Uh, from where? Side, side, receive from the sides, receive from the top, receive from... Yeah, like where, where it starts to bend, yeah. Like just like the side. -ish. Where it starts to bend on the circle? Yeah. So like carrying carrying that way? Yeah, carrying that way. Carrying or inside. Carrying either way. Depends how the ball lays. Okay. So, um, should we just, let's just try, we, we, we won't, we won't go immediately opposed. And anyway, even if, 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 if you're against me, you're only semi-opposed, aren't you? Yeah. So, let's just work forehand to begin with. Let's just do three to start the ball rolling. Carry hard, that way, All right? I'll be like a bit of a semi-passive defender that you've run up to, and I'll just kind of make it, fe make it feel as if I'm putting you under a little pressure, and then, and then take your shots and then we'll explore from there. All right, here we go, go. Good. Okay, so talk to me about uh, all three of those goes. First one, good, carried hard. When you say good, what do you mean? What was good? Just good contact with the ball, good carry, good way of getting past you, just wasn't as precise as I wanted it to be. When you say not as precise, what do you mean? Not hitting the sideboard. So you're aiming for the sideboard? Yeah. That's part of our task, is it? Yeah. What are we focusing on here, by the way? What are we focusing on? Are we focusing on power? Are we focusing on contact? Are we focusing on placement? Are we focusing on, you know, what is it? What's the elements? I say contact and placement. Contact in what in what respect? What the quality of the contact? Well, just quality of how how well I hit the ball, not topping it, not pushing it, not. Okay. So you want to be able you want to be able to make quality contact with the ball under a little bit of pressure whilst running at pace yeah okay all right can all three of those those goes were different weren't they yeah describe the difference between all three of them first one when i carried i started on my backhand brought it to my forehand to get past you and then shot yeah second one mostly forehand don't talk about the carry so much because we're not interested in that talk about the actual shot itself and the differences between the shot what happened in the in the shooting action first shot would have been, I was more upright up here, like yeah. with my yeah, and then came and then came down on the ball. Yeah. Second shot, I slightly lost. The, I, I, I yeah. had the ball behind me, brought it front, lost yeah. it, and had to come around. You had to really reach for it. Yeah. yeah. And then first one didn't have much control of the ball. Upright, leant back, topped it. That's the third one. That's the third one. Upright, yeah. leant back, topped it. Yeah. Okay. Out of all three goes, which was the best? I would have said the second one. Second more one. More of a sweeping action. Yeah. Right. Now, you, you said you lost control of the ball and you had to reach for it. Yeah. So what was, what was the difference in terms of the, the movement pattern in the, third, in the second one? I, had the ball, I, I was shielding the ball with my, with my body. In the shot. I had to bring, in, I had to bring yeah, it. but in the actual shot, what was the difference? Like, I, what, had my, I was more the, in front. The other two were different in what way? I was standing upright and slightly more upright. static. So... The second one, which got loads more power and placement, you were much lower. Yeah. I think, the, is that worth exploration? Yes, yeah. What, what's our focus? Let's just pre-agree our focus here. Get, get lower. Look. More of a like sweeping action of, okay. of the shot. Right. That's what we're going to explore. Yeah. All right, go. Ooh, just off the post. With a rolling dive as well. Yeah. Make it look good. Make it look good. There we go. It's all about the appeal. OK. 
Okay, so again, three different ones. Yeah, yeah, three different. Let's let's go back. Let's let, let's evaluate them all again. What was the the outcomes were different, but the actions were different. So talk, talk, talk to me about the outcomes again. Oh, three outcomes. First one, low and hard towards where I wanted it to be, which is the far corner. So low and hard that you ended up on a roll. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, second one, managed to get a bit more height on it. Actually managed to get it about knee height. For the were keeper. you trying to, or did that just happen? I'm, I'm always trying to get it just above the backboard because that's where the keeper can't so you're, trying to, you're always, always trying to lift it a bit? Just a bit. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Okay, that's fine. Go on. And third one, I just didn't get as good a connection. Got a bit too far in front of me. Yeah, now, did, what was the difference between the third one and the first one? Um, did you notice? I didn't. Okay. So my observation was that the first one was obviously so low and sweeping that you ended up doing a roll yeah because it was there but it was the best of the three contacts mm. second one i think you got a bit of turf but you still got pace on it and a bit of lift which was fine because you were trying to lift it so actually taking a bit of turf is fair enough third one though i think you were you, you weren't weren't as low at all you were uh, you're still low but not as but you were a bit more upright yeah 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 so i think again we need to think about where that ball position is further away and then reach mm. okay same again the way you think about it it's like a drive Golf drive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because their, their swing in a drive is a lot more round. Not quite as low, but, but not far off. Oh, yeah, obviously not quite as low, but it generates more power when you bring it round, using your hips more and digging your feet into the ground. Okay, ready? Yeah. Go. How, how do you think of the contact? wasn't wasn't too bad yeah, it's good. Yeah. pretty solid we, we, contact's the main thing we're after yeah not not necessarily where it goes in the outcome or anything could you reach lower there yeah yeah well i i should have you stayed up right yeah no, and then I, you get the top the control of the ball before the shot was uh not right was less yeah yeah but you're gonna have to adapt to that aren't you yeah so you're gonna to have to, and I'm just thinking that actually even there you you sort of you went quite early to shoot, yeah. And I'm not sure you had to. You could have let that ball go further and then played it lower. What about that one? I spent How too much time in the How similar was that air. to that? Very, very, yeah. I spent too much time in the air, overthought it, and a step forward. And... There's a common denominator here with with the the less good contacts, right? The top strikes. And the common denominator is, there's two things. What do, you, what do you think they are that we've just been talking about? There's two things that are sort of common. Whenever you do one that's not, not, not as good a strike as you like, what's the? Rushing. Rushing, definitely, yeah. So trying to, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And what's the second one? I think trying to, uh, oh, leaning back, trying to like get under the ball. Being more upright. Yeah. yeah, so allowing the ball to come away from you and being lower gives you a better contact, right? The irony is, the irony being, of course, that some of your best contacts are almost when you're in your least balanced state. Yeah. Right? But that's kind of because you're forced into it. So you almost need to place yourself in that situation a little bit rather than just trying to snatch at it. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. All right, here we go. Ooh, close close still still slightly upright yeah oh now we're talking yeah let that one go that's pure you, there you go you see difference right you let it go and you reach for it right yeah he had a ball in the way yeah, ball in the way there. <laughs> Stick tackle. You lost What's that lip for? It's obviously a stick tackle. Yes, but you lost control of the ball and whacked my stick. Oh, again, can that go further?
See, even that's better. I mean, that's way out of position. Yeah. You're having to do so much manipulation to get to, but it's even better than the ones that are right there for you. It's almost like you need that ball to be there to get the, you know what I mean? To get yeah. the focus. Now, just, just for the purposes of being like, we're just gonna, just cause we need to, we need to zone in on this sort of idealized, I mean, we're not, we don't need something ideal. We're obviously gonna be adaptive, adapting. But just to try and have a little bit of focus, I think what I'm going to do is just take some of the, take a little bit of pressure away from you, right, in the game in the game sense, okay? So just come here without all the carry and run and dribble and dribble and carry, right? So we don't have to get into too much complexity yet, just to simplify a tiny bit. I'll take a bit of pressure off here. I just want you to just, just experience the idea of, and, and we'll try it with three, right? So we'll do some differential, right? What I want you to do is, uh, you've got yellow ball, orange ball, yellow ball, right? So yellow ball is going to be, carry yeah right and and shoot with the upright or, or shoot more as you have the orange one's going to be so i want you first yellow is upright orange one is going to be more reach and then the yellow one is the maximum reach so that we can explore explore the three options yeah yep okay and no, no pressure from me just want you to explore those options right try it so that's the first one that's ground first, right? Yeah. This one's further out now, okay? Ground again. This one's got to be way out there now, okay? Oh, okay, interesting. Right, let's try again. Oof. I'm going to get it straight away. Okay, say, same task. But this time, the question I'm going to ask you, while you're going through this task, the only thing I want you to consider is, Try and be aware of where your focus of attention is. Where are you, where are you placing your attention? Okay, yeah. you know what I mean by that? What well, my, my, my target, my goal. Yeah, so when you're in the action of shooting, where, where is your attention? Hit the ball. Is, it, is it on the ball? Is it on the goal? Is it on the... On the ball. Is it, well, I want you to just tell me. I don't know if you, you think it's gonna be there, fine, right? but on the ball, okay, right, same again. So remember, upright. remember, yeah. more, more upright, further, further. Okay, off we go. Upright, okay. Yep. Final one with the big reach. Oh wow. Blimey. Right, tell me where your focus of attention was. Uh, I, I still say the ball. You Getting think? onto the ball. Okay. Right, for the purposes of this go or, now, we're gonna, do, actually. we're gonna do three goes. And for the purposes, I want you to have your focus of attention on where you wanna hit it. Oh, it's gone over the top. Oh, well done. Um, okay, so I want you to focus of attention on the sideboard, not the ball. Yeah? All right. Makes sense? Obviously, you will have some attention on the ball, but your primary goal is to think about where you want to get the ball. Yeah. Okay. I'm not too fussed about your, your, the, ball, the distance the ball is away from you this time around. Okay, so put the orange one in here again. Not too fussed about that, but it's more about this idea of, right, you're going to think about that sideboard. We're trying to get, it's two points if we get a badum, right? Yep. One point if we get a, bum, a, 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 a backboard sideboard. That's no good. We want sideboard backboard. One point for backboard and obviously zero points for missing. Okay, off we go. Two points. Ooh, nearly, but it's a backboard sideboard, not a yeah. sideboard backboard. Okay, so in those three goes, did you have your attention on where you were trying to get the ball? Yeah. Did you, and would you have said that the three, the three contacts were better than the previous three contacts? Yes. They weren't perfect. Yeah, but they were better than the last three. Definitely better said. because you were like topping and duffing, weren't you? Yeah. Okay, so interestingly, we've discovered something I think here, which is that actually when your attention is focused entirely on the ball, you can sometimes top and duff yeah yeah 
when you're over here when your attention is focused on your target area where you're trying to where you're trying to shoot you actually have more success interesting yeah so my question would be if we were in a scenario like a game scenario and we had a goalkeeper and stuff would it be would it be valuable you think to be thinking about your target point when you're shooting more so than just thinking about the ball yeah 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 yeah, yeah? it's a bit of a leading question i know but anyway let's go Still better. It's not ideal. It's not perfect, but it's better. I wasn't really. I wasn't thinking about it as much that time. Oh, you didn't have your focus right. Okay, good. Sideboard, sideboard, sideboard. <laughs> nearly, nearly. <laughs> Boom! There's your two pointer, and that's your best contact so far. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So. What was that little micro, what, 10 minute, 15 minute session? Yeah. What have we discovered? Reaching for the ball so that equals better contact. Ball further away is helpful rather yeah. than underneath you. Yeah. yeah. What else? Um, I guess looking up for my target and then knowing where my target is is a lot more helpful to getting it there. Keeping that, keeping that in your sort of mind peripheral vision yeah. as your focus. Yeah. I mean, you could tell like, with that last one, I looked up, saw it, looked back down, shot. You nailed it when you looked there. Yeah. And is that the first time you've done that? I think the, the last one I did do that as well. Okay. Yeah. So, and we also noticed quite dramatically that your contact on the ball, when you're thinking about where you're hitting it, is much better than when you're looking at the ball and staying in that focused area. Yeah. Which is weird, right? Yeah. I mean, you're obviously looking at the ball when you're hitting the ball, but actually keeping, keeping in mind where you're trying to get it to almost, for some reason, seems to free you up to get your shot. Yeah. So that's where you've got to be thinking you're going to hit the, hit the ball. All right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. Well, he talked about, initially he talked about doing backhands and forehands because he wants to do a backhand shot as well as a forehand shot. So we just started with the forehand shot and actually we discovered there was actually quite a bit in there we wanted to look at. So we didn't get to the backhand. We might have done, depending on that. Um, so I, I, I probably tried a few different things. The first one was initially trying to get some information from him around what what do we see happening like what, what are the what are the issues because didn't know what the issues were necessarily and what we discovered i think was that he he seemed to be making some contact i mean i put pressure on initially and was just exploring how he how he ran with the ball i wanted i wanted his his, his uh, approach to the circle for the shot to be in some way real like there's a person that he's got to go past in order to make that real which forced him if you noticed to do all sorts of kind of crazy skill things, which sometimes threw him completely off balance. And then we discovered that actually, when he's at his worst, like he's, he's most off balance, he actually does it best. So there's a kind of time to think thing in process here that I, I spotted, but anyway, I wanted to sort of see if he did. So after a little while, I thought, well, we probably need to just simplify this down a little bit after a few trials and just discoveries. We started to see like worse and worse strikes. And so we, did, we started to explore this idea of, well, let's, if we've noticed this idea that where where the ball is in proximity sometimes generates better outcomes let's explore that in more detail and actually so we simplify the task took away some of the delivery pressure um but still kept a focus on and i tried to use a little bit of differential learning by saying let's try one that's near middle and far away and discover which one was better what we found was actually it wasn't necessarily just the ball position um we found that actually he was getting an, a sort of an equivalent contact almost with every single different ball position. So it's actually not that technical. In actual fact, it's more of a focus of attention thing. So I, so I explored that, I experimented with that and said, Let, where is your focus of attention as a matter of interest? It's, it's on the ball. I said, well, tr let's try focusing on, on, uh, on the goal as a target, just as an experiment. I didn't know we'd get an outcome here. Um, and immediately the contact point was much better. The strength of it, the strike was far better. You felt better about that, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then we could talk about that a little bit around how we might use that in games and be focused there and all those sorts of things. Because also we focused, we noticed as well with him that the time, the more time he has, the worse it is, which is strange. And I've noticed this when you play, like if you're under pressure, you shoot much better than if you've got time. Yeah. If you're on your own in the circle with a time shot the deer, it's like the worst possible thing for you because you're yeah. more likely to top it than anything. Yeah. Right. So weirdly enough, you need pressure, which is to be expected because you usually play with that. But in this scenario here, what we know is, is actually all you've got to do is focus on where you want to place the ball. Yeah, it might even be the goalkeeper. Smack it at the goalkeeper as hard as you can. And that's fine. But that's where your focus has got to be. The, the, the differential part was the 
uh, kind of creating a spectrum of, of, of movement. And then from that, you're using that as a diagnosis yeah. to, to come up with a diagnosis. Well, to see actually whether that was the relevant factor. And after a few trials, we noticed it didn't seem to make much difference. Even though we'd seen better in, the, in his previous goes, we'd seen better outcomes when he had the ball further away from him. So I, I thought, okay, that's interesting. That's a clue. Let's go into that and discover something in there. So we tried the differential side of things and discovered it didn't make much difference. It's actually contact points were, were worse each time. So that then made me think, ah, so there's something else going on here. And hence I asked the question, where's the focus of attention? Um, and, and then we discovered that it was on the ball. But like a lot of that was me just sort of kind of co-creating within, trying to work out what's happening here, yeah. trying to be as much as I can getting information from him to around what it is that we, we can discover here. Cause I could have gone straight to a technical solution. I could have said, oh, hands low, you know, hands here. And initially we did start to explore ball position because we noticed he's getting better outcomes the further the baller is, is away from him, which happened by accident. So actually putting him in the, putting him in the semi-realistic deli you know, delivery thing, he, he, he created that by having this situation. So that's when we went into that space. Okay, there's something, to be in there's something interesting here about where your ball is. Turns out it wasn't that. <laughs> it's more like when he's in the worst position, he kind of focuses down and makes the shot. When he's got more time, when it's right there for him, he sort of can't get the, get the focus. So we now, we now then found out that it's about placing his attention somewhere else. Yeah, maybe, or, or even just do some, you know, what I could probably do here is if we had, if I had a group of, say, 10, I'd have five shooters and five, like, tacklers, and then we'd swap over, so I'd make it a game. Would it be 1v1s? One, 1v1s, one one one. yeah. We'd do 1v1s, maybe constrained space, um, and do 1v1, but it'd be a game, it'd be a team game where you've got the five shooters trying to score as many goals as they can in, say, 20 goes, and then you've got the five tacklers trying to stop them. You know, with some degree of, I'd probably limit how far away they could get, so so they'd have to run quite a way to put pressure on. So they always get a chance for a shot, but they've got to do it quickly before the pressure comes on. So I'd manage the pressure that way, um, and then I'd swap it over to make it a bit of a comp competition. I feel like it would be challenging in that situation only if the defender always knows that they're going to go to their forehand side. It would change the way that defender. I think. Would have to come up with a way to yeah, and now in the, for the purposes of this, if the game was about let's let's explore forehand shooting yeah. under pressure, then I probably would just keep it like that, albeit it's a little unrealistic. But then we might change the game at the start. The starting point might be okay. Let's just play a game where you can go either side, and the defender has to defend you, and then we might then zone it down and take a slice of that op more open game down into the forehand. I work that way quite a bit, which is let's take the big thing and then slice it, and then slice it again, and then come back out to the big thing. Evan, did you, did you, was that ever at all frustrating? Like, if you, your dad probably has a lot of solutions in his head already, based on what his experience has been as a player. Um, do you want to just kind of get to it, or, or does that process give you some energy as, as part of, like, it's interesting to try and solve a problem? Yeah, yeah, that I, it, may, it makes me want to practice it more. And it, it was frustrating at times when I would have, I, I would top it knowing, well, I was doing the thing that I thought I was supposed to do, having it further in front of me and I'd still top it. There was clearly something else in that that I hadn't quite got reach of and didn't understand what was going wrong. I mean, I didn't know that focus of attention or where he was placing his attention was relevant necessarily. And I'm, we still probably need to explore that in more detail. I didn't know that for sure until we started doing the work. Um, had I led it with more of a technical thing, which is to start off with a load of instruction, say, right, well, I want you to run with the ball, I want you to carry it, I want you to get low, I want you to reach. And he kept doing trial after trial after trial. Like, I'd be getting frustrated, he'd be getting frustrated. So it was more of a discovery process, but it wasn't entirely fully just like leave him to it. Because I reckon if he'd carry on doing that, he'd have got mega frustrated. So my point is I step in as, his bit, as a guide by the side to say, tell you what, just tell me where you think, where, where your focus is. Ah, oh, now we've got to somewhere. If that hadn't worked, we might try, might have gone some other different direction. I guess what would be the, the main areas in your toolbox that you would rely on? That's not working. Let's try differential. That's not that didn't. Let's do focus attention. 
well, one of the things you probably noticed there was I did shortcut a little because of my own knowledge of things like that. So there's no, there's no reason why we had, what, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, we're filming, blah, blah, blah. But there's no reason why with a whole series of goes, you know, how many goes did you have? 30? Yeah. There's no reason why with a whole series of goes, he wouldn't have come to that discovery himself. I doubt he'd have come to the discovery of focus of attention because I need to maybe guide where his attention, I needed to ask that question. So the constraint I asked was, where is your, tell me where you're, tell me what you're thinking about when you're doing the shot, what are you experiencing? I'm getting clues all the time by soliciting information from him, right? So I came to focus of attention, why? Because we tried something out and we were doing a process of diagnosis, right? So I just create different tasks. So by doing the three ball task with the differential learning, what we actually discovered was not necessarily the relevant factor here. That, so we can move on from that, we can move on. Now, of course, I'd have taken a lot longer with this over a period of time, and I'd have actually almost let him come to that point, and he may well have come to that point on his own, just with the right design. You know, I could have just manipulate the task, manipulate the task, he comes to that point, he goes, do you know what I've discovered, Dad, which he often does? You know what I've discovered? Actually, when I'm focused on where I'm in it, it goes there. <laughs> so he would well have come to that point himself. For the purposes of the camera, and also just to show a slightly different focus and, a, and an approach. So I'm just doing a bit of a diagnostic here and say, okay, we've got a little bit of limited time. Still not going to tell you what to do, but we are going to discover it together. And we sort of went on that journey. Yeah, so, so in, in that case, your role is almost like a try this person. And if well, he can participate in that, or it even makes him more aware of the different things that he can try yeah. in the future, yeah. it's got his, brings autonomy toward him. As, you, as you're working with him, he sees the different poss possible solution spaces that he can start exploring as well. Yeah, so like he could have been, sort of, we could have been in the wilderness together. So he could have been like just exploring, we're exploring together, let's work it out. Which we were a few moments, but then there was a few moments where I, I stepped out of the wilderness and said, actually, I'm going to be the guy by the side now. Right? I'm going to say, look, here's, here's a path we can follow. Let's explore this path. And that's part of the role sometimes to go there. Now, it's different from saying, I want you to do this. I want you to do it that way. Try it, you know, do it this way, do it that way, do it the other way. It's saying, let's explore this together. So I'm trying to, I'm never, I'm trying to avoid, if I can, becoming the, I'm your instructor, do it this way. I'm trying to say, let's try this, let's try that, like you say, let's have a go here. But I could have just as easily gone, right, let's just design a practice and have, an, have 100 goes. Tell me, tell me what you experience after that. It could have just worked just as well. Either way, though, the biggest key for this is I want him to be central to the learning process. He's making the discoveries. I'm just like the mirror bouncing off him. In order to diagnose, you have to solicit information. Yeah. You have to be alongside the learner. Yeah. If I'd have taken myself out of the situation and sort of made and been more directional and instructional, yeah. then it's purely about him trying to do what I'm saying. Exactly. Like, it wasn't a single demo. I never went, I do it this way, you know, get low and hit here and like that. It's all him, right? Because I'm not wanting to do what I do. I want him to do it. I want him to find his way. Yeah. If he finds like hitting the ball upright like this is the right way for him, then fair enough, right? Uh, let's say in this moment, a reach shot seems to be the most comfortable in, in that moment. Maybe it wasn't a focus of attention. Maybe it was yeah. a, re a reach shot. That could potentially be in a game, you know, employing that in a game. You're, that's a little more risky because your ball is farther away from your body. You need more space to be able to, to be able to take a shot yeah. when the ball is farther away like that. Yeah. So, would you, as a, you know, just from your experience and knowing that that could be detrimental down the road, would you guide them away for that, or would you let, let the environment in a games-based situation teach that to him? Uh, I would let the environment, because I think he, he would begin to work out, for example, that if the area was more congested and there were more players around, he doesn't have the option of that shot. So he's got to discover a different solution. So yeah, this is really more about in a scenario where you've got an attacking option and you're up against a singular defender, which does happen in, in counter, break game, counter break situations, go, you, know, you can go here. Equally, equally, there are times, I think, when he has, even in a congested circle, when the ball away from him, as, as in... He, if he's defending me, me getting the ball over there is much, much safer than me doing it here where he's got a chance of coming in and creating pressure. So I do, it's, it's, it's an appropriate way of doing things. But again, it, like you say, it doesn't work in every context. But for the purposes of this, that's why the limitations of this task, me versus him, old man versus young fast, fast boy, <laughs> makes a massive difference, right?